About 10 years ago, I was banquet manager of a highly prestigious venue in southeast London. Mostly I deal with weddings and corporate events, but very occasionally something big would come along. This particular occasion was the annual dinner of the Royal National Maritime Museum. The key word here being royal, as we were to be graced with the presence of the museum's patron, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, the Queen's husband. Not quite as exciting or glamorous as Lady Di, or as rock and roll as one of her wayward offspring, but a royal nonetheless. The day before the event, the building is swept by secret service guys, with neat haircuts and ill-fitting suits. And then, two hours before His Royal Highness's arrival, the building is swept once more, with sniffer dogs and sentries are posted. An aide to the Prince, the Duke, His Royal H, whatever, comes to me just prior to the event and breaks down the specifics of how our honoured guest likes his martinis prepared. Take a clean, dry cocktail shaker. Add three cubes of ice, three ounces of Plymouth gin, and then stir clockwise 17 times. Let it sit while you zest a lemon. Pour the gin into a dry, not chilled or rinsed martini glass, add the zest of lemon, and withdraw immediately and discard. Serve. And so I make these drinks while being watched by one of the humorless stiffs, presumably to make sure I don't try and poison one of our nation's ambassadors. In all, I make four of these martinis for the Duke in little over an hour, which I later conclude are not martinis at all, but rather big glasses of slightly chilled gin masquerading as sophisticated cocktails. This guy had a reputation as being a bit of a boozer, which was confirmed by his gin consumption and the fact that he didn't touch his chowder at all and merely moved his sea bass around the plate, reconfiguring it to give the impression that he'd actually eaten something, like an infant does to assuage the wrath of his parents. As Philip left, I studied him for signs of drunkenness. A stagger, a slurred word, or one of those politically incorrect outbursts he'd become famous for. But nothing. This guy was a professional. And, I concluded, a public figure to be proud of.